Okay, in our ever-continuing series of meeting people, players, behind the scenes, and so on and so forth, I'm delighted to be joined by, uh, by Ben McDoodle and Mark Bright. Now, um, Brighty, if I can start with you, uh, you've been out injured for a while now. How's it going? What's the si uh, situation? Uh, just started my rehab uh, last week, and uh, we're into week six now, and should be back playing by the end of January, hopefully. End of January. And just tell us, remind us what the injury was you had? I had a groin operation, had the adductor tendon reattached and the rec femur reattached and just thought I'd get a hernia fixed as well. Brilliant, so you sort of buy one get one free almost. Yeah, so. an MOT, mate. Yeah, and you're, so you're feeling better, you feeling good, feeling strong? Yeah, it's feeling better, it's, uh, it's still a little bit sore hernia wise but you know it's getting better. Okay, now across the Tasman to, uh, to Australia, Ben, what about yourself? You're just now through rehab and maybe playing this weekend? Yeah, it's, uh, it's all looking good, I'm sort of planning to, to come back this week. Um, grade two hamstring tear, which is uh, usually about six to eight weeks. So. When you do hamstring, it's like being shot in the back of the leg, isn't it? I mean, it's like it's yeah, no it's not pain. Yeah, it's not great. I, I've never done a grade two. I've done plenty of grade ones, but uh, you did it properly this time. Did it properly, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, now, Brighty, just um, this is probably we're talking just before we sort of started recording. This is probably the longest break you've had since two thousand and five because you're a you you don't know what summer looks like, really, do you? No, nah, not really, mate. Um, yeah, I've been doing a few back-to-back -back winters, uh, five seasons with Red Ruth and then five seasons with the Marcos, and then eventually ended up here at London Scottish. And what made you want to come to London Scottish in the first place? Uh, just a change of scenery and uh, the opportunity to play in the Championship. Yeah, the challenge of playing in the Championship, playing a better grade of rugby? Yeah, definitely. I, I had a uh, bit of a niche to play Championship ever since PJ left Red Ruth and went to rather than then off to Doncaster and he's telling me that I should be getting out there and having a run around the championship. So when the opportunity came up, I uh, took it. And what sort of difference do you notice between the summer and winter rugby or going home to the Marcos and playing with them? Oh, I think the ITM Cup is a, is a different level of ITM Cup to the championship, but um, championship's definitely a step up from National 1 and you know it's, a, it's a definitely harder and stuff. Enjoying. Now, Ben, you, your background is rugby league, actually, back in uh, in Australia. You played for Manly, I think I'm right. Yeah, I played for Manly, Melbourne Storm, um, and Newcastle as well. So, but did you play league and, as you call it, rugby, or we would call it union, at the same time? Did you manage? To yeah, play? Gr growing up as a kid in Australia, I think it's the same in New Zealand. Uh, you play you play both sports until you reach an age where you have to decide uh, which route to go. So, so you went the rugby league route? Yeah, because my father was was born and bred rugby league man. Um, very good player, so yeah, we just naturally followed, followed Dad's footsteps. And then, what made you switch to, to rugby union? Um, the funny thing was, I think Ian McGeekin um, came out to Manly in two thousand and three, and the uh, he spent a year out there coaching, didn't he? Or getting some background. In well, yeah, they the, the rugby world cup. Yeah, uh, and yeah. they trained it when I was playing for Manly. They trained at our uh, home ground, and I had a quick chat to him. And I think at that point they realised I was Scottish qualified. Um, and I think they kept an eye on me uh, over the coming years and then I got a phone call one day and I was close to signing with St Helens at the time and uh, I just, yeah, I just decided that it was a great opportunity, um, it was uh, a long term deal so it was, uh, it was an exciting sort of prospect so I obviously took the, took the chance to do it. And you came over and played for which? which I, I signed with uh, Edinburgh originally right. and then uh, switched the borders but I signed with the SAU. Right. Okay. And you you had you got a couple of caps in Scotland. I think yeah, I played say. played a couple of caps. I would like to get a few more, but um, as I said, yeah, just in, injured at the wrong times and stuff like that. So, so who did you play against? What were the caps? Who did you um, I, I played with Dubu against Wales, Millennium Stadium, uh, packed house with the roof closed. So. That must have been quite a nervy. Uh, it was. It was. Uh, time was it? It was almost suffocating. Yeah. Um, but Hell of an atmosphere, especially with oh, the roof closed. Fantastic. A well. uh, lot of red jerseys. Um, but uh, and did you win? No, we, we actually lost. <laughs> we, we got someone sent off in the first 10 minutes, so it was, uh, yeah, we, it, it was one of those games that was, uh, you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda kind of thing. Yeah. But, uh, no, great, great experience and, uh, yeah, something that I'll uh, always treasure. And coming to London Scottish, now this is your second season, I think I'm right in saying, you yeah. were there last year when we went at Barking and so on and so forth. It's, uh, what made you want to come to Scottish? I mean, you've played at the very highest level, and yet you come to a side that wasn't even in the championship when you joined them. Yeah, exactly. I was I was actually looking at going to France um, to play, and then uh, I got a phone call from one of my friends and agents, uh, Tom Beattie, and um, 
he said to me that there was an opportunity here. He said the club was ambitious and uh, that they wanted to win the league. So I, I am a fairly competitive person. I sort of thought that was that was enough for me to to jump on board. So I think when I arrived, I think we had to win every game. So it was a it was certainly a big heck of a challenge. It was a mountain to climb last year. Yeah, a lot of pressure every week to win. But I think as the season got on, we got used to used to that pressure. So I'm sort of uh, this year's been. It's been a little disappointing in the, in the sense that I think we should be a lot higher up the table. But we've had injuries to key players and I think we've lost a lot of key matches, you know, probably three or four that we probably should have won. So I don't think it's an indication where we are on the table. Well, look, we've got a couple of, uh, of big games coming up in the league. We've got Doncaster at home this weekend, which is a big, big game, isn't it? And if we can win that, it keeps us in touch with the, the top eight. And if not, I think Simon's of a mind that it's going to be difficult after that if we, if we don't manage to win on Saturday. Then we've got Plymouth at home as well, who are in the, the bottom four with us at the moment. So it's, a, it's a, going to be, a, well, it's going to form our season, isn't it, the next, next few weeks? Yeah, definitely. I think, I think we've sort of put ourselves in this predicament now that we, a bit like last year, we're just going to have to start winning games. Toughing it out and every just, every yeah. week, I think uh, we'd take a three 0 every week, wouldn't we? <coughs> yeah. Definitely, but uh, <laughs> you know, the fans would do that. But, <laughs> but we'd take it. Yeah, but I think winning's a habit. I think we need to sort of just get on a roll. You know, what I mean, to start winning games, uh, and hopefully it's going to start this week. So, but you know, they're uh, they're a big physical team, and I think they're gonna they're really gonna bring it. And I think that's one of the differences, isn't it, between the championship and other divisions, if you like, is the physicality and the size of the packs you're coming up against. You don't find this size of packs that we're coming up against, for instance, in the next level down, do you? No, for sure. They're, they're all big forward packs, and we've probably got the smallest one around. But, I mean, with mobile, that's one thing, yeah. big thing that we have got. But it's just little mistakes that are costing us. We've got mistake on mistake, and then we're in, you know, in trouble from there. But... I mean, the, the forwards are fronted out, even the back, I mean, they're, we're all going good. It's just yeah. it's just little things that are not polished off enough to win these games. All right, look, to finish off, two and a half weeks away from Christmas Day, what's on your wish list? Anything in particular for your wish list for Christmas? Um, I don't know. What do you reckon, Bridie? <laughs> Injury-free, maybe? Yeah, yeah they're handy. Yeah, and any messages for the fans out there? Anything you want to say to them? To, to... Uh, just keep turning out and supporting the boys. Um, they appreciate it. Don't they? Yeah. Definitely, and uh, the, the more people we get there, the better, really, to spur the boys on and, and get them home. For these Especially these next two games, two Doncaster, games, and we've got Melrose in between, but actually the two league games are the key games we must be focused on. Yeah, no, definitely, what Brian said, I think the, the support the boys really, you know, do appreciate it, and it does lift the guys, so, you know, get out and support London Scottish. Now, look, I've got to ask you, from the Southern Hemisphere, you must be loving this weather, aren't you? I mean, it's snow is forecast, I think. I mean, it's cr- how do you deal with it, coming from where you come from? You said to me beforehand, in the winter you go surfing or spend four yeah, hours on the beach. Yeah, it's, uh, I do. I do wake up some mornings and think, what am I doing? But, <laughs> but uh, I suppose that's the joy of playing rugby, isn't it? Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, listen, guys, thank you very much. I hope we see you certainly back on the pitch Saturday. Look forward to seeing you back in January, and uh, thanks for joining us. Cheers. Thanks.